Hello and welcome to another edition of the School Safety Free Period Podcast. I'm Amanda Klinger. And I'm Dr. Amy Klinger. And we're with the Educators School Safety Network. We are a national nonprofit organization and we provide school safety training, resources, and technical assistance to schools. And hey, by the way, go stop in at our serious podcast, um, the School Safety News. We just launched our first episode of that. So if you want a double dose the sweet and the savory, or you want, uh, you know, like funny and serious. Yeah. Or you want to just hear what's happening current event-wise in schools and what that might mean to you, check it out. So if you are unfamiliar, the School Safety News Podcast is more serious, which means that this podcast, the School Safety Free Period Podcast, is a little less serious, quite a bit more fun, quite a bit funnier, and we still do manage to do takeaways and do some little bit of serious contemplation, and so you can feel like you learned something while you were laughing at how funny we were. Except the one today is not so funny. No. I'm not finding it amusing at all. It's not that funny, but it's not that serious, so we're going to talk about it here on the School Safety Free Period. So. All right. This is a situation where a student has their cell phone video, which will always come back to bite you. Um, And they are videoing or, yeah, is it videoing when it's on a cell phone? Yeah. Okay. Well, they are recording a confrontation between a teacher and a student in a hallway. Um, Low level confrontation. Yeah. And unfortunately, the teacher immediately steps in it and goes to the lowest common denominator. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what was happening that started it, but at the point when the person is um, capturing it on video, the teacher is upset, and this is a 16-year-old student, by the way, um, is confronting and says, and I'll just use the quote. The teacher is saying here. Teacher says, I'll tell you what, this kid right here, and points to, talks to the other teacher, you're lucky that I got a job because I'll put you right down there six feet under. Um, Pointing at the kid, pointing in his face. Yeah, and then it goes back and forth. No, you won't. The teacher says, I would, I really would. The kid, do it. And then the teacher goes even lower by humiliating or demeaning the student. No, because you probably have a bad background. Your family doesn't love you. And it goes from there. Lots of back and forth. Well, Well, to be fair, I wouldn't say that the student was escalating this. I would say the student kept John, the student kept talking, the student could have been quieter, but the student wasn't escalating, the student wasn't yelling, the student wasn't getting in this person's face. The student just kind of kept having little comebacks and having the last word. Right. Well, and then the the other teacher present doesn't really intervene until the student says shut up to the teacher. Mm -hmm. And then he decides they need security based on that part of it. And then there's just a little bit more back and forth. And then for me, the more tr- one of the mo- more troubling, the second most troubling aspect is the, the teacher walks away and then pretty soon comes back and it makes a, the additional threat again, something about six foot under. And then thank goodness we have someone in the hallway that has some sense, a student, another student steps in between the two of them and says, nah, and sort of walks away with the other teacher. Walks the teacher away. Walks the teacher away, yes. So it's, there. you know, there's two things that are particularly troubling and not particularly funny about this. One is that you have a teacher that's resorting to those sort of threats. Twice. And the second is that he's coming back for more to do it a second time. Um, It's one thing in the heat of the moment, I just blurted that out. It's another thing to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish this or escalate this. Mm -hmm. Um, So really, I think there's two separate problems. I mean, I can think of instances where I said things in a confrontation with students that maybe probably weren't the best things I could have said. I can't, Not death threats. Can't I was going to say, can't say I ever threatened to kill anyone, but, uh, you know, come back for more. And, uh, you know, and the calmer heads did not prevail in this particular situation. And the teacher was put on administrative leave. And so there isn't a lot of funny things about this, but what it sort of engendered in, uh, or, or for Amanda, was as kind of this discussion of disrespect and what that looks like and how we handle that as educators. Yeah, I always really struggle with this because clearly I I understand that there is a need sometimes to discipline. And you know how to be disrespectful? I know know how to be disrespectful. Um, I, I understand that there is a need to maintain a culture of respect in order to do the function of a school. 
The problem I have is when we are using disrespect as a blanket catch-all discipline. So if I say to a teacher, you know, it seems to me that you don't really understand this content. That's disrespectful, right? Technically, that's disrespectful. Well, Should depending I be- on the way in which you do it, the context in which it's done. So, yeah, but you can't. I'm not sure that's a black and white one either. Right. But so... But if I, whereas if I say, you know, F you, Mrs. Klinger, okay, that's disrespectful and a student should be disciplined. Well, but I could also discipline you for profanity, which takes me to my point, which is discipline people for stuff you have policies about that are much more ironclad than uh, disciplining people because they make you angry. Okay, but so... I guess I just it's I think it's just a really blurry line because here you well, can know, I tell my story about dis, about suspending kids for disrespect sure. see if that helps <clears throat> worked with a student at one point a graduate student and the situation in his particular school um, a student had decided that they didn't like this teacher very much so the student drew a pretty offensive cartoon of that teacher came in in the morning. Now, why offensive do you mean the teacher took offense because it was making fun of him, or it was like lewd and offensive? Uh, I wouldn't say it was pornographic, but it was a little bit lewd and certainly not complimentary and uh, uh, upsetting to the teacher, yes, making fun of him. Okay. Um, Teacher or student comes in early at like 6.15 to the high school, runs 50 copies of it somehow in the office, and posts them around the building. Which is amusing um, to a certain extent. The problem is they suspend the kid for disrespect. They appeal, family appeals, and it ends up being overturned. Whereas if they had just disciplined him or suspended him for the rules that he broke, like trespassing, he wasn't supposed to be in the building at 615. It was clearly posted that students were not allowed to use the copier. They had a policy that said anything posted in the school had to be approved. So he had he was three for three in terms of school regulations and protocols mm-hmm. that he violated. But instead, they disrespect or I'm sorry, they suspended him or disciplined him for the thing that made them angry, which was that he was disrespectful. Mm-hmm. You could have gotten to the same place by pointing out these are the things that you did. Now I understand you want to go after the disrespect, which is I think what you're talking about is what's the difference between disciplining somebody because they made us mad and disciplining someone because they violated a rule? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a tough line. So, I mean, here, watching this video, I, I don't, and of course, you have a snippet in time. You don't get to see what happens before. I wouldn't say that this kid in this situation was being awful, terrible, disrespectful, disruptive. Now, he kept John, and he kept talking, kept talking, but... Right, I, and and at what point? but I also will say as an administrator, I need to not have my students telling the teachers to shut up. Right, but to be fair, he said shut up after the guy already threatened to kill him once. So I mean, you know, so if an an adult, a person in power, says you're lucky I don't put you six feet under because. I could, and because your home life is terrible, and that's why I'm not going to do it because you have a bad background and your family doesn't love you, we expect a student to remain silent in the face of that sort of a beratement. I mean, that's what I I think is really, you know, the crime, quote unquote, that this student committed was not being quiet. But I don't know if that's what... Well, and and as I said, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult when you have that especially if this is a school that potentially has some climate and culture issues. Well, clearly they do. I can tell you. Okay, but let's not make judgment based on a minute and 30 of video. But if this is a school that potentially has climate and culture issues, which I would agree they might perhaps have that, you know, maybe I'm sure it's very frustrating. I've worked in schools where the kids drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. But that is not just a kid problem that the kids just need to be better. It's the environment needs to be better. The teachers need to be better. We Mm -hmm. need to be more effective. We need to build relationships. We need to establish clear policies and procedures and consistently enforce them. So there's all kinds of things that contribute to that, not just these darn kids need to be better. And so if you have a kid that is willing to continue to draw and, and you have a teacher that's willing to escalate and you have those things happening, there's a lot of blame to go around, not mm-hmm. just the stupid kid didn't keep his mouth shut because that's not the only problem evident here. Right. And I think it's tough, you know, the teacher that the teacher that didn't make the threats but that came in, you know, you there's part of you that wants to say, like, intervene, get your colleague under control. But I, I'm assuming that their reasoning was I don't want to undermine the authority of my colleague in front of all the students. 
but at some point when yeah, my, but that was gone when he said he was going to put him six foot under well right so i mean that authority is gone yeah. we're, we're into just we're going to have a, a brawl here or we're, we're all we are now all on the same level i have taken myself from a professional authority, educator an adult person who should know better to a 16 year old smack talking right. kid in the hallway that's where i have and i understand how quick <laughs> it, it, that can devolve Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I said earlier, my particularly most troubling thing is that he walks away and comes back. Right. I mean, you walk away and go, oh, shit, I can't believe I said that. I need to whew, I need to get myself together here versus I have a few more things I'd like to add to this confrontation. And, yeah. you know, that's that's particularly troubling. That's more indicative of somebody that didn't just briefly lose their temper, but that this is their way of doing business. Yeah. You're right. This wasn't very funny, but I do think that this is important, and I do think it's an important discussion to have. So there you go. It's a little bit of a one-off, a little sober, somber educator school safety network, well, uh, school safety free period. And, and and I guess the last point that I do want to make is, you know, for, from a media perspective and from a parent perspective and from your perspective, perhaps as an attorney, it's easy to look at this and go, oh, horrifying. I can't believe people act this way. But I also will say to the educators out there, like myself, I've imagined that. If I haven't done it, I've certainly imagined what I would say to a kid. Or I mean, it's very easy to Monday morning quarterback these folks, which, again, I think we've criticized them justifiably. But until you've done that job and lived in that world and walked in those shoes over and over and over, it's, it's easier than you think to reach that level. Of sure. frustration. Sure. So I just want I just want to like make it a little more nuanced than yeah. just you know making <clears throat> heroes and villains. Yeah, absolutely. I I think the the concern that I would have is that you see you know remember there was a couple of years back where there were all those videos of school based law enforcement using potentially excessive force on students in classrooms. It's not that like oh wow. I just, I get concerned when we treat it like, wow, that was a one-off. That person just lost their temper and went off the deep end. We took care of that person, and now it's a problem. You're speaking to a larger systemic issue. If we're not addressing climate and culture problems in a school, you're creating a situation where teachers are potentially escalating things because they are frustrated all the day, every day, because we aren't addressing these underlying problems. And so when we talk about SROs using excessive force on students, we can't just pull those particular SROs out of schools and go, okay, well, we solved the problem. No, we have to have appropriate training and supports and systems for SROs in schools. And we have to, you know, when we're talking about educators, work on the climate and culture and so that we don't have teachers who are being put in that position. Well, and and the other argument that will be made is, well, schools are a reflection of society, which they are. And so our society is increasingly confrontational. And we, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have had a kid whipping out a cell phone and documenting this thing and all these other things, which, yeah, okay, those are all interesting points and excuses. But the bottom line still remains that this is still a problem. It still can be addressed. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be addressed, as you said, beyond just that kid and that teacher. Yeah. It needs to be addressed much more um, both within that organization and much more systemically. Because every person listening to this podcast can come up with at least one or two instances that weren't video recorded where they have either participated or witnessed in that sort of escalation and that sort of humiliation-based Punishment. Uh, punishment. Yeah. And so I think there. this is not just us looking at that gentleman and shaking our head. That's us looking at ourselves and our organizations right. and going, right. is that happening here? And what are we doing about it? Because it is happening everywhere. It happens in homes and dining rooms and, you know, schools and everywhere else. But the question is, what are we doing about it? And it doesn't happen to this extent. So you would say, you know, if we we don't want to treat it just like a bad apple. Well, okay, this teacher was a bad apple because he made a death threat. Well, it escalated beyond any sort of acceptable level, perhaps because of an aberration, because of the behavior of this individual. But the conditions that allow escalation are happening all over. And it's a very, and it's a topic that makes educators, including myself, feel very defensive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you just heard me a minute and a half ago go, until you've walked in our shoes and done what we've done. I mean, that is a sentiment that I think many of us have, and it's valid. But we also have to look in the mirror instead of out the window and say, what are we doing to contribute or to solve this problem? Right, and treating, treating this teacher as a bad apple or as an aberration doesn't help solve the underlying problems that are frustrating for all teachers and all educators. 
So we yeah, have it's to, frustrating enough, let alone, like you said, having to try to control your colleagues as well as your students. Right. So there you go. Not what? funny. <laughs> Should we just like tell jokes? Just like crack a few jokes here at the last little bit so we can well, my, end, on my, a, end on a funny note? Your my story was, uh, funny. story was a bit funny. Yeah. I would... If you just want horror stories and war stories of funny discipline issues, I can do those all day. Maybe, but maybe next time. Maybe we'll do a special episode, uh, a special uh, war stories, uh, funny kids episode. Like it'll be like uh, a Forrest Gump or one of those movies where like the person's 100 years old and they're reflecting back on their life and telling stories. I can affect this really old person's voice and then I can tell you stories of things that happened in my 28 years. You know, people who listen to this podcast must think that you are 100 years I old. I am. Because I feel like you crack a joke about it every episode. That could be a contest. Guess how old I must be. Well, you can go on our, I mean, there's a picture of you on the website. Maybe this will be a way to get people to um, respond to us. You know, send us your comments. How old do you Conjecture think I am? on how old you think I am. <laughs> Send your comments of how much you think I weigh. This will, that'll be a great, this will yeah, be a great point We'll just of start discussion. with ageism first, and then we can move on to other offensive <laughs> topics. Do you like my haircut? Do you think it's cool? <laughs> just just tell us what you think about us. Like the slam mean, book. Mean girl style. <laughs> <laughs> the ESSN slam book. All right. Well, we made up for it here at the end. If you made it all the way through to the end, you got a little bit of humor. There you go. Please do rate, review, and subscribe. I know I ask at the end of every episode, but that really helps us, especially in iTunes, being able to get in front of more folks who might be interested in this. And then also, if you like this podcast, please do send it on directly to your friends and colleagues who might also get a little bit of a kick out of it. And we appreciate your time. Thanks. Okay, so the, the discussion that we were having was... Well, why don't you just start from the beginning? Because let's have the discussion we were having, and then I'll cut it, and then we can pick up the beginning. Or, or just do it like it's the whole thing, and then you don't have to edit it. Okay, I mean, I still have to do editing. But, well, okay. whatever. I don't care.